Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this Elementor tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use CSS to create a custom button hover effect like this. So when you hover over one of these buttons, you're going to have this little animation going from left to right. And later in the tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could do it from any direction. So we can animate from right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can download all of the CSS I use throughout this tutorial. So now I'm going to jump into the back end and get started. And here we are on the back end of that page. So what I'm going to do is show you how I have the button set up and then how you can add the CSS code and how everything's going to work. So let me jump over into the button first. And as you can see, this is just going to be the default type of button. Just some simple text right here. I don't have a link really. Uh, but I wanted to show underneath style. Uh, you don't need to declare anything underneath your normal or hover state, especially the hover state. If you have anything in here, it's probably going to conflict with the code that I have. So just keep all of this blank because what we're going to do is with CSS, we're going to be able to control that blue and that like black hover color. So now we can go ahead and actually drop in the CSS. And like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can just copy and paste it. So the next thing you need to do is figure out where you need to place the CSS code. So there's two different ways you can add CSS code for this example. And if you only need this effect to happen on a single page, what you can do is just add it into your page settings right here. So just go into your Elementor page settings while you're on that page. And if you go underneath advanced, you could drop your CSS code in right here. But if you need to have this at, let, let's say, a global level and you want to have it for all of your buttons throughout the website, what you can do is go underneath your customize and then underneath uh, additional CSS, you could just go ahead and drop the code in here. So just figure out where you need to put your CSS code. And now I'm going to walk you through everything kind of step by step. So for this example, I'm just going to paste everything into my page settings and you can just go ahead and paste everything in here. So when you do that, uh, nothing's going to work unless you already declare that CSS class. So you need to go into your button and underneath right here, underneath advanced, and underneath CSS classes, you need to give it this class name right here, swipe left hover. So you can always go ahead and change whatever class name you want here, but you're gonna make sure that you have to go in here and update wherever it says that exact thing. You need to make sure that you change it to your name. So the very first chunk of code right here is just adding a line height of zero. So if I remove this, watch what happens right over here. You're gonna notice there's like this little gap in between the button and the end of that container. So if you're okay with that, you don't have to add that CSS code, but I figure just to have the line height go to zero because the way it works is these buttons inside of Elementor, the size kind of determines on how big the font is and your line height. So if you're just gonna have a single line, you could just do line height zero. Now these next two lines right here, this is just kind of declaring where the position is for that effect. So we're gonna do position relative and overflow hidden. That probably doesn't mean anything until I hit delete. So I'll hit delete on this. And you can see underneath here, you can see that little black hover effect coming in. But let me zoom down into the second button. And you can see that this big new black line is going to be appearing. So what that's doing is taking 100% of the width of this container. So you can see this width, uh, widget right here. What it's doing is it's just adding that effect to the left of that button. And then when you hover over it, it kind of goes in. So that's why you need this CSS code right here to say position relative. Overflow hidden means it's being cut off. So it's still technically there where, where my mouse is, but it's being hidden with code. And then if I jump down here real quick, the content and the position absolute same thing. You're going to need these on in order for like the CSS code to like align correctly. So make sure that you don't delete any of these uh, four lines right here. These are really important. And then you probably have noticed I did comment out every single line right here. So you can kind of figure out how everything's working. So this one's really important. You're going to want to make sure that your background color, you need to declare that inside of here because this effect isn't going to work correctly unless you kind of declare the blue and the black with CSS. Um, so that's why I wanted to make sure that underneath your button settings, just make sure you don't have anything inside of Elementor because you might start to get some glitches or some weird effects. So whatever color you need right here for your solid state. So this is the blue color. You can just change your hex colors right here and it will update right there. So now I'm going to jump over into this effect right here. So this is a pseudo element called before. So that's what that little black line is. It's basically always sitting there and then you're just animating that in. So what that code right there, absolute position means is at the top is at zero. So it's sitting here at the top where my mouse is. And what we're doing is we're pushing it left negative 100%. 
So if you remember down here, it's negative 100% sitting over here. And then when you mouse over, it's transitioning back over to the right. So let me just go ahead and show you that by default, if you want it left to right, you actually don't need to change any code. But if you change that negative 100% to just 100%, watch what happens. You're gonna now animate from the right to the left. So if you need to go left, right, you could always just change the left and right positions right here with a negative or plus positive. And then you're not gonna to wanna to change these. This is the width and height. You could just keep that at 100%. So you can see right here, it's keeping the full width and full height of the button container right here. And then this right here, the background color, this is like that dark gray or that black. So whatever hover color you need, that's where you're gonna change it right here. And then right here for transition, we're gonna go be going from left. We're at 0 0.3 seconds with an ease effect. So if you wanna make this a lot slower, like let's say 2.3 seconds, now when you hover over it, you can see it takes 2.3 seconds to go. And when you mouse out of it, it goes back. So you can see it's responding when you go in and out of that container. Now let's go ahead and keep this uh, something really fast, like 0 0.3 seconds. So that's probably the type of effect that you're looking for. And then this right here, you're gonna to wanna to keep this, uh, by default, this is the slide in on hover. So you're gonna need this code in order for that to work. And then the Z index, uh, if I remove this, watch what happens. If I remove the Z index, that font isn't gonna appear correctly. So that's why we have the Z index of 100 for that text. So that text is kind of sitting at the top. So now I'm gonna show you how you can animate from uh, top to bottom and then bottom to top. So all you need to do is just change out a few values right here. So the very first one is you're gonna to wanna to do negative 100%. So what it's gonna do is now be above the button rather than next to it. Then underneath your left state right here, just hit zero. So top, negative 100%, left is at zero. You can keep all of these by default. Then what we need to do is where it says left right here for transition, change that to top. And then same thing down here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that left is at the top right here. So now when I animate, it's gonna go from the top to the bottom. Now it's really simple to just do the flip and that is going a plus positive. So I just went to the top and removed the negative 100%. So now it just shows 100% here. Now it's gonna be animating from the bottom up into the top. So that's how you can change all of your four different directions, left, right, top, bottom, whatever it may be. You just need to change out a few values in here and then you can animate it however you want. And then these last two bottom lines right here, this is going to be you know, optional if you don't want this effect on tablet mobile. So this is the code I like to use inside of Elementor is when you're using these different responsive modes like up here for tablet and mobile, they add this body class called tablet and then a body class called mobile. So I like to do it like that instead of doing like um, meta queries because if you change that meta queries, then you have to go back into your code and all of that. So Elementor released this a while ago and this is the CSS code I like to use. So all you need to do is just say for the transition duration, just make it zero seconds. So it still tries to animate it when you hover or click it, but it's not gonna actually animate anything. So you're not gonna get like this weird glitch effect. And that's it for this video on how to do a custom CSS hover button effect inside of Elementor. Again, this is Mark from Wiki Design.